Graphene is uh, a highly sought after, highly studied material these days, and it has some unique properties. The first application is probably going to be in touchscreen displays. Uh, to be able to just take a sheet of graphene and have what's called a transparent conductive electrode. So to have graphene and use that as a conductive electrode that's transparent. Graphene in itself probably isn't going to be conductive enough in one or two layers to give you really what you want from an electrode. Uh, so to be competitive with what's out there now, which is indium tin oxide, one might want to complement this with, say, a metal grid underneath some work that we've done in the past on this. Then it really competes very well against something like ITO, but also we can put it on flexible substrates, whereas ITO is not amenable to flexible substrates. Well, with graphene, it's, it's probably very difficult to follow the field and to uh, distill the avalanche of papers you might get if you, go, if you just do a search, probably a Google search on graphene. I imagine you'd get thousands of hits. Yeah, at the beginning, people were working like manually, non-controllable way to working with the graphene. And uh, like uh, two years later, pe people developed a more controllable method to synthesize large areas graphene. And then every people can working in these areas. And uh, of course, this a lot of uh, things is uh, not controllable, like the edges, the stacking orders, which needs people to put more efforts on in these areas. A single sheet of graphene itself is a conductor. It's metallic in nature. And what really somebody wants, what really people often want for that is a semiconductor. And by putting two sheets of graphene together though, one on top of the other, then one can induce a band gap or make it a semiconductor by putting a voltage across the top and the bottom planes of the graphene. Uh, if you can control the edges, if you control the stacking orders, basically you control these materials. It is very difficult for scientists to determine, okay, what's been done already, what can I do? It's still, uh, you know, that's part of the process, part of uh, the education is, is learning what other people have done uh, and finding out that little niche, that little problem that you think you can solve that no one else has done. And then the whole translation into a very established industry, like a silicon industry that has billion dollar fabrication facilities, multi-billion dollar facilities. How do we bring in a new material to complement silicon into this very well established area? But if the properties are very good, it will move in. But usually the way technologies advance is they come in at lower levels and they work their way up to higher levels. So an easier target is the touch screen displays get that worked out and clever people will figure out how to get the co more complex devices made. There's newer ways that are out now of directly growing the graphene on an insulator so you don't have to do a roll-to-roll -roll transfer. You can directly grow it without having to transfer it because transferring graphene can be somewhat problematic. It's, it's like dealing with, with uh, plastic wrap, a thin sheet of plastic wrap, but this one is only one atom thick so it becomes even, even much harder than dealing with plastic wrap. Uh, uh, so if you can grow directly where you want, that would have an advantage. Still, the problem with the direct growth method, still you have to reach temperatures of 1,000 degrees, which are too high for most polymers, but it's okay for insulating substrates like silicon oxide or silicon nitride or boron nitride. I think it's highly likely that the ultimate applications that are, that are commercialized for graphene have not yet been envisioned. That uh, you know, we're, we're thinking about it, using it in all sorts of different applications but ultimately, like many materials, uh, it'll take 10 to 15 years before the actual uses of graphene are determined and commercialized.